Hello, Internet, and uh, all my friends and family watching. Thank you for checking in. Um, my last video was last Sunday. Today is a Saturday, so I'm trying to break the habit of recording everything on a Sunday. It's been a really busy week. I think I mentioned in the last video that I was going to be making two trips to Mayo on Wednesday and on Friday. Uh, went down there by myself on Wednesday because it was just uh, kind of run-of-the-mill tests, blood work, like the full slew of blood work um, and a CT scan and then a uh, urine collection, which is easy to do. So I drove myself down and back on Wednesday. Then uh, my brother Paul went with me on Friday uh, because we had some more serious stuff going on. Uh, had the meeting, like the, for the first time in six weeks, had a meeting with my oncology team on Friday morning. And then I had a prostate biopsy on Friday afternoon. So that was like an all day in Rochester. We left about 7.30 in the morning, didn't get back until 5.30 in the evening. And uh, yeah, pretty heavy week. Um, even the blood work on Wednesday and the CT scan, you know, there's a bit of anxiety in waiting for the results to come in. So I just wanted to share with you guys um, what happened this week. Um, my blood work looks really good. Um, I'm very happy about that. You know, earlier in the year, I was very anemic because of blood infection, chemotherapy, uh, major surgeries. And so um, they had me on iron supplements for a while because I was just, you know, that's the case for a lot of cancer patients who are going through chemotherapy and surgeries and different things. Anemia is very common. Your blood, red blood cells count goes way down. Um, hemoglobin, all of those measures. But now everything is squarely in the range where it should be. So I was happy to see that. My CEA, which I've mentioned, and again, if you're a person who keeps on top of anything that has to do with colon cancer, the carcinoembryonic antigen, CEA, is the main tumor marker that they use to monitor. It's not perfect by any means. It's not like a magic number, but um, still, it's a, it's a good indicator of what's happening in your body as far as uh, the presence of cancer cells the proliferation or uh, decrease or diminishing of the presence of cancer in your body. Way back in October or Halloween last year when I was first diagnosed, my CEA was in the hundreds. I think it was 108 or 128, something like that. Uh, it gradually diminished as I was receiving chemotherapy between November and March. Uh, and got pretty low before my liver resection in April. But then since late April, uh, that CEA had dropped to 0 0.7, which is fantastic. Uh, but then it was up to 1.2 in July, and my August number is 2.5. So it is creeping back up, but it is still actually within the range of normal for a non-smoking adult. Uh, you know, if you... Those of you out there who've never had any experience with uh, uh, or presence of colon cancer in your body, the if you went and they drew blood for CEA, it would the normal would be less than three for a nor for a for a male, a non-smoking adult male. So two point five, I'm still in that range, though it has been creeping up a bit. Um, my CT scan, uh, the news is not quite as good. Um, Again, if you've been following, I hate to repeat a bunch of stuff that I've already said, but for those of you that haven't seen it, you can go back and watch previous videos. Uh, but there is a uh, nodule in my left lung that we've been watching ever since June. It was five millimeters, then in July it was eight millimeters, and now it is 1.2 centimeters. So it keeps growing by about 50% every four to six weeks. So that is concerning, and when I saw that, I wasn't thrilled, um, of course. Uh, it's still just a single nodule. There's nothing else in the lungs that are concerning them, but uh, the radiologists make notes saying that it is concerning and worrisome for new metastatic development. Uh, 
Also, unfortunately, and I was not expecting this, there are a couple of very small new lesions in my liver, which was resected in late April and has grown back, regenerated, but already we're seeing some small lesions like on the order of one, one and a half centimeters. And uh, that gets me to the uh, oncologist appointment yesterday morning. I was glad that Paul could be with me so he had four ears instead of just two to listen to. It wasn't just my oncologist, it was his team. So I, we talked to a couple of people and I was just so impressed with them. I mean, you know, I've been telling everyone, I feel extremely cared for. I feel like they are really on top of it. Because again, I am not only dealing with uh, stage four colon cancer diagnosis, I am also dealing with um, a faulty mitral valve in my heart that needs to be addressed. And I'm dealing with the urology issues, uh, which have gone towards BPH and then elevated PSA and the need for a prostate biopsy, you know, so there needs to be triage between all of these different medical uh, departments to know what is the proper course of action because you can't do all this at once. One thing affects another. Uh, you can't continue to go, you know, under anesthesia over and over again. And I've already had two major surgeries this year involving uh, being, you know, out for the down for the count under general anesthesia. So this is going to be a longer than normal video, by the way, as you can see. Um, my oncologist team, oncology team, were not alarmed by the new development at all. It's kind of expected um, because again, I am stage four. On a micro disease level, there is residual disease in my body and it can pop up anywhere at any time. The point is we're doing surveillance, we're watching carefully and we're trying to be ahead of what's happening. So my recommendation yesterday from my oncology team was ablation. They want to ablate the lung uh, nodule and I should have that scheduled next week. Um, with the Labor Day weekend, nothing much happened. My appointments were on Friday, so we'll have to wait till next week to see what how the scheduling works out. But that is something the the lung nodule we can we can deal with uh, ablation, which is where they stick a needle in there, and you actually are under sedation. It's not deep uh, general anesthesia, but I'm kind of semi knocked out. You may you know people have experienced that when you get your wisdom teeth out or something like that. They insert a needle and it transmits microwave uh, radiation. Maybe that's the, not the right terminology, but it's microwave and they basically burn that nodule. So uh, they say that it's, you know, very highly successful. Mayo Clinic is one of the best radiation ablation centers in the United States, maybe the world. So I'm very confident about that. And they say, we're going to, we're going to burn that sucker. So I'm happy about that. The liver stuff is a little more complicated because we need to wait on the results of my prostate biopsy. There is a teeny tiny chance that I have some kind of concerning uh, metastatic prostate cancer that could have spread to my liver. The chances are very, very small, but they just want to see that prostate biopsy to rule that out. Uh, more likely, if there is cancer in my prostate, it's totally unrelated to the to the colon cancer. It is not metastatic from colon cancer. It is a separate entity. It's low volume, slow spreading, and it's not really affecting anything else. That's what we hope, and that's what normally statistics will show uh, about prostate cancer. It's rare that prostate cancer is more uh, fast, high volume, fast spreading. And there's no evidence from my MRI and CT scan, there's no evidence of any of that happening um, in the lymph nodes, my pelvic region. So anyway, we still need to wait and see what the, what the prostate biopsy says before we go after the liver metastasis, the liver lesions. But again, if, if we learn that there's no connection with what's happening in the prostate, they can uh, do the very same procedure they're going to do on the lung nodule. And that means the needle goes in, they fry those little 
babies <laughs> and, and get rid of them. So we also talked about uh, chemotherapy. You know, radiation and ablation is called local treatment. Chemotherapy is systemic. And you all know what that means. That means it's affecting your entire system and it can make you sick. It can make you feel terrible, it, you know, all kinds of different side effects. And, you know, they feel that right now there's no need for me to go on any kind of maintenance chemotherapy. We need to keep watching this. And they want to keep me healthy for heart valve replacement, which hopefully, hopefully, we pray, uh, can happen later on this year. Hopefully before the end of the year, so... Wow, we're up to, I'm almost up to 11 minutes now. But I wanted to get this posted. Uh, I appreciate so many of you. You know, I get text messages, emails. I know you guys are following the videos. It's, you know, what I've learned over these last months is it's very difficult for me to communicate details individually to people. So that's why I've been putting these videos out there just so uh, you guys can check in and I don't have to repeat details over text or phone calls or email you know, dozens of times. So, um, although I am happy to text with people and talk to people, but you know what I mean. So, um, anyway, I'm still feeling good. And, uh, I felt, like I said, I felt the oncology meeting was so positive and it really gave me a lot of hope. I feel like they know what they're doing and it's, you know, a holistic understanding of all the pieces of the puzzle. I'm a complicated case, <laughs> I've been told. And I, I know I am because I've got multiple issues uh, going on at the same time. And I'm very happy that they are all communicating, whether they're cardiologists or urologists or oncologists, everybody's dealing with this together and, you know, guiding me and, and uh, advising me on what the best path forward is. So Anyway, that's enough for today, and uh, um, yeah, I'll be in touch later, and love you guys. Thank you again so much. I like to make it clear every time I do a video that I'm very, very grateful for your prayers. I can feel it. I feel the prayers and um, the love that comes my way from so many different directions. So thank you so much, and we'll... Do more later. Bye-bye.